This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, and so if you want to indirectly support the channel while also buying or selling cards for your own matches, your own tournaments, your own duels, your own purposes, your own needs, then definitely check out their site and see what they have to offer you. I'm a big fan of how they do business, and their pricing and shipping from what I've seen and experienced thus far are both top notch. So definitely check out their site, which is linked in the description, and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile video, and this time it is going to be on a hopefully quick little overview on the Pendulum Magician deck that I played in a duel video that went up earlier today. And honestly, this is just to give you a little overview of the deck. It's a nice little starting point for if you want to build Pendulum Magicians, but there's definitely a lot that needs to be changed about it. I'm playing it in its current form because, one, I didn't want to mess around with Zoo cards because we've been playing with Zoo for literally six plus months at this point, so I just didn't want to mess with that. And then, so I just wanted to focus more on a pure, like, Pendulum Magician for the Link era sort of thing. But then also I was playing this in the Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro, or not Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro, the Dueling Book. It's been a long time since I've said anything that wasn't Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro, but the Dueling Book ranked area of the uh, of the card pool doesn't include Code of the Duelist yet because that's not street legal in the TCG for another basically week, essentially. Just a couple more days until the end of the week. And so when that comes out, a few things change. Obviously, Mrs. Radiant gets implemented into the extra deck, and then some things change in the main deck because Spellbook of Knowledge is playable in this deck. A bunch of different little things change that actually change the core structure of how the deck plays but this was uh this was basically just what i was playing for that video so just a quick overview of the deck there's three apex avion three fairy tale luna three blackwing gofu the vague shadow one copy of max c three copies of perform power skull Crabat joker one copy of oath dragon magician three copies of wisdom eye three copies of double iris two copy of black fang three copies of purple poison three copies of harmonizing magician literally just playing like a big beefy magician lineup and the thing that I've noticed is that I'm actually really starved for low scales in the deck in terms of on paper literally purple poison and Ove dragon are the only two low scales in the deck but honestly I haven't been finding it any sort of problem strangely enough I literally haven't had a problem with low scales in the entirety that I've been playing this deck strange uh, very strange but anyway uh, two copies of Star Pendulum Graph, because I want to see it. Three copies of Dual Alliance for the same reason. One copy of Pendulum Call in case I'm very, you know, not not very uh, scale heavy in my hands. If I need extra Pendulum Magician cards, uh, and I'm willing to, you know, do Duelist Alliance for Pendulum Call if I've already got Star Pendulum Graph or Time Pendulum Graph access via Black Fang or not Black Fang Double Iris. Um, and I just need something to get off Duelist Alliance, and Pendulum Call is just usually a better option in certain points. Especially since Apex Avions are in the list, like sometimes you need to make sure you have a guaranteed scale, and Duelist Alliance allows you to get an additional scale to go alongside whatever you had to scale to make it live, and then also usually gets you something like Harmonizing Magician to be Pendulum from your hand, and then make a level 8 Synchro alongside your Miss Valley Apex Avion. So, it's a, it's a nice little one of It might actually get bumped up to more because I've actually been liking it a lot, but at the same time, the uh, Spellbook and Knowledge Engine that gets implemented post Code of the Duelist will probably take a little bit of slack off that as well. But then Upstart and Book of Moon just to be a generic good spell. And then Traps are two Time Pendulum Graph and two Dimensional Barrier because Barrier is still really strong. Uh, but at the same time, I could probably see these getting cut. Now, the extra deck, I just basically put these three cards in for the Gofu access just to try and make Decode Talker just to be able to open up the extra deck summon capability a bit more. So, Double Link Spider, one Decode Talker. It'd probably change. Uh, to uh, maybe like three Link Spider, a Decode Talker, and a Mrs. Radiant in Code of the Duelist time. Not quite sure yet. Uh, but then Diamond Crab King, Evil Swarm Nightmare, Abyss Dweller, Diamond Dire Wolf, Castell, Tornado Dragon, Time Star Magician, Trapeze Magician, which is a really strong card that a lot of people don't seem to really respect of the OTK potential of this card, at least not in 2017, but then some generic level 8 synchros such as Stardust, Cypher Lord Omega, Beals, and Ignister, the best pendulum synchro uh, that we could ever hope to have and have access to. But definitely a bunch of things can change. Like I said, this is very much a skeleton list. Uh, but being able to Pendulum Luna and Apex Avion from hand are really what make this deck be sort of viable in the Link era of the game because Apex Avion is still just one hell of a boss monster. It returns itself to your hand. It doesn't maintain any sort of extra deck presence and doesn't like start min like messing with your nonsense essentially. And then this deck, the Pendulum Magician engine by itself, is still really strong in Link era because even if you only have one extra deck zone available to you, 
You can still Pendulum 1 from your extra deck and then Pendulum Harmonizing from your hand, which then summons a monster from deck. It's essentially like your Pendulum Summoning for a minimum of 3 every single time you have a good Pendulum Summon, and that's very good. Now, obviously, Gofu can go into Decode Talker to open up more spots for you to Pendulum into, and then Oaf Dragon being able to add cards back to your hand turn after turn after turn just extends your Pendulum Summon reach by 1, because instead of using Oaf Dragon in the old conventional way, which was to Pendulum Summon your monsters, they go to your extra deck, and then you Oaf Dragon them back to your hand uh, to be extenders for your next turn, you use Oaf Dragon in a more proactive stance of just you add your stuff from extra deck to your hand to just immediately Pendulum Summon it alongside the card you're putting in your extra zones. Uh, so, there's a lot of things that just, you have to change your mindset with how you play this deck, but this is still very much a strong contender for the Link era because of how well it, like, just establishes. Like, Harmonizing Magician is such a fucking good card. Like, this card is 100% what carries a lot of this deck's potential uh, going into the potential of the next format. Now, Luna, I'm not too sold on. I really like it, but at the same time, it's not nearly as good as Kirin. Uh, so, I mean, there's that, and then there's the Gofus that could easily be swapped out for something else, but at the same time, it does allow you to extend your play reach. Um, the problem is, is that once we put Mrs. Radiant in the extra deck, when you Gofu, instead of having you to use the Gofu to make the Decode Talker, you're going to be left with just a random Gofu on the field, meaning that I might be incentivized to play some level 3 Pendulum Monsters like Archfiend Eccentric, or stuff like that, that just gets good value. And then that would allow you to synchro with Gofu into Omega. And then you could also have a Harmonizing Magician on that same Pendulum Summon. Go into multiple Omegas. There's a lot of potential, like, theory that could go into that. Um, in terms of what you could be capable of doing. So, there's a lot of things that can change for the upcoming format and upcoming months uh, with playing this deck when Code of the Duelist drops and new ban list potentialities and things like that. But this is just the skeleton list that I was playing with because this is all that I wanted to play with for TCG ranked uh, on Dueling Book and it's been doing rather well. So basically, just take this as, uh, as what it is at face value. is basically just something I threw together really quickly and I've been having a lot of fun with in the ranked pool in uh, in Dueling Book. Now I am low in the ranking pool, but I'm grinding through it, and I have yet to have any problematic games, even playing against things like Zoo and decks like that, even in the lower ranking pool. So there is that to consider. But anyway, this was just a, a little quick video just to show you guys what I'm playing with and what like go into a little bit more detail on why some of the card choices you may have seen in the previous video were a little bit more wacky, but I'm definitely going to be doing a more updated deck profile on this deck once we get access to the Code of the Duels cards when the week finishes out and they become viable for play in the TCG ranked pool on Dueling Book, because I'm actually really enjoying Dueling Book. The more and more I play on it, the more and more I'm reminding myself why I used to love DN, and it's just, it's, it's filling me with nothing but, like, joys that I haven't felt in a long time when it comes to playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Online, so... There's that to consider as well. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. As always, like this video to support this kind of content and let me know you want to see more. Subscribe if you want to see more awesome Yu-Gi-Oh! content and hit that little notification bell button if you don't want to miss an upload and you want to enter the notification squad. Also, as always, links are in the description of my Facebook fan page as well as my personal Patreon page if you want to support the channel and me as a content creator directly and help make videos like this more possible in the future, then definitely check out the link that is in the description and maybe go consider contributing to that Patreon page it would help out a lot and you'd have my eternal gratitude as it were but other than that as i've already said thanks for watching thanks for your time as usual guys and take care i will see you in the next video